Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 12 of the Hot Sauce Z podcast. For the first time, we are doing a visual component to the podcast, and I'm, it's going to go up on YouTube. So that's going to be one more place you can check this out. Uh, and of course, we're going to keep the audio component going as well. So that's very exciting. I was able to get a new ISP and new internet service this week. So that's what's kind of helping make this transition possible. I finally have an upload speed that's worth using, and it will allow me to put up more content on YouTube more quickly, which is great. And I really look forward to putting out maybe a little bit more stuff, but it's just, I'm not going to feel like it's going to take such a long time to put videos up, which always kind of discouraged me before. So if I have an idea for a video, I can put it together and then get it up. And, um, that'll be that. So it's been, it's been really good. I was able to get fiber internet for a pretty good deal here in my city. And so we went with that and yeah, the, the speeds are just night and day difference. I've talked about it on the podcast before, but my speeds before the download speed was 20 megabits per second, like max. That's what it would hit. And then the upload speed was the horrible part. It was only at two at, at max. And the fact that we have multiple users in the house, I was having to put a QoS policy onto the router and activate that. And so if anybody knows about networking or if you don't, um, rather, if you don't know about networking, a QoS policy, basically what you're doing is you are enabling that on your router and it leaves a little bit of overhead just on top of whatever you set. So since my max speed is around 20, I would go into the router and I would set the QoS policy to really only allow network hog applications like Netflix or downloads, that kind of thing. They would only be able to go up to 17.8 megabits per second, leaving a little bit of overhead for applications that don't need quite so much all at once. So for example, Battlefield 5, um, which I was playing a lot when I put the QoS policy in, and it allowed me to, somebody could be watching Netflix or streaming music in another room, and I was still able to play on Battlefield 5 without just lagging all over the place and having to lead my shots. You know, It didn't increase all this latency or the latency wasn't as bad. It did increase latency, but it wasn't quite so bad. So really excited to have new internet. Um, as far as gameplay goes with the fast speeds, somebody asked me this on my stream, and I wanted to talk about it here too, uh, since we're all about gameplay. It didn't really affect gameplay so much per se. It, I did get a little bit less of a ping if you were to check the the number and because I was so, sitting usually sitting somewhere like on the good end before at like 47 milliseconds of ping um, when I would play on Battlefield and now I can sometimes be around 41 so there's like I, I save six milliseconds which to most people is probably not even really going to be noticeable um but yeah, no, it's it's been great. Anytime that I'm going to need to download a game now, I'll be able to just do it. I'm not going to have to wait overnight. So that'll be great for when, when these new games start coming out that I want to check out. And anytime, <laughs> anytime there's a Call of Duty update for this, you know, for Warzone, that, you know, they're usually like 45 gigabytes. That'll be able to be knocked out in a few minutes, not overnight. And it's just, it's a night and day difference, and I love it. Um, just we're gradually getting there we're upgrading the setup as we go and i'm glad that y'all are here to watch the journey and kind of enjoy it with me and kind of see some some ways that maybe if you're kind of where i started out you can see and at you know you can see the avenue that i took and learn from i guess my mistakes or the pace that i take that kind of thing that's that's what we're here for so big week this week um Due to that, that happened Tuesday, and then I was supposed to have a new mouse come in Tuesday as well, but they ended up, it was delayed a day. But I do actually, let me take a sip of coffee real quick. I actually was able to get my new mouse in this week, thanks to UPS finally um, bringing it to me. Uh, not It wasn't their fault. Logitech took forever to ship it out. It's totally their fault. Um, and I don't really, you know, you can't really hold anybody too strictly to 
having slow shipping and all that kind of right now because of the pandemic. Um, I think probably what should have been done on Logitech's end was when I purchased the mouse in May, they should have maybe been a little bit more honest that they didn't have stock or weren't going to be able to ship it. There was a little banner on the top of the the web page that said they were having delays of about 14 days, and it was way more than that. I mean, I ordered the mouse like I don't know Star Wars Day around there, maybe maybe the May the fourth, May the fifth, and then it just now got here this past Wednesday. So a little slow, but finally got it. It's the, uh, it's the white G305. And I got this one because I was actually originally looking at getting a G203 because that's kind of, from what I saw on the internet, supposed to be one of the best budget mice you can get if you're looking to get pretty serious into gaming. And so if you are looking for a mouse, definitely check that one out because it's it's actually a lot cheaper than this one is and it's like pretty much the same basic shape and function and everything but I think it's got a, a cord and for those that haven't seen it since we're just now doing a visual component if you want to check this out on the on the video podcast um, I've got my microscope micro microscope Microsoft Sculpt Mouse. Can't talk this morning. Um, this is what I was using before. It's pretty heavy, um, but no cord. So I was thinking about getting that G203 and got to thinking about it, and I was like, I'm really probably not going to enjoy that cord. I could adjust, of course, but I was like, I'm used to not having a cord. So since I was so used to that, I didn't want to switch over to having a cord so I decided that I better go with the wireless and waited on a good deal on the G305. This one's got the the light speed sensor on it so it's it's very quick. Um, Would have preferred to have it in black but I got it in white because that's the one that was on sale Um, which probably for the amount of time that I waited I could have just waited and got a black one later on a different sale and whatever it's not a big deal but I've really enjoyed I've played with it for what two days now and at first I was a little underwhelmed it was almost like you know I talked about um on the podcast before that I was not underwhelmed at all with 144 frames per second I was actually flipped I was thinking that the new mouse was going to be the thing that was like oh man I can really feel the difference and that 144 fps would be kind of gimmicky it's the other way around 144 FPS is actually super cool, and I recommend anybody try it out that they can, when they can. Um, the new mouse, my, and this is going to depend on what mouse you were using before, but my old mouse was good enough. I mean, it's fine that I don't notice any huge differences. I wasn't completely blown away by switching to this at the difference. Like, it's not just this massive, massive improvement. But there is an improvement, don't get me wrong. Uh, it tracks way way smoother it's very smooth in it's tracking and part of that is because the feet on this one are all messed up i used this old one this microsoft sculpt mouse that i've got i used it a lot in or just after college and i used it without a mouse mat on just a hardwood desk and so it's got a lot of wear and tear on the the feet on the bottom of it and so it doesn't glide quite as smoothly as this new one does across the mouse mat. And I feel that when I'm playing. Uh, the G305 is much, much lighter because it only takes one double A, and you can actually convert it to a triple A if you want to save even more weight by buying an adapter and sliding that in there. Or if you want to, you know, kind of just rig it to work, you can put a piece of aluminum foil in there with a triple A and save some weight. So for people that are looking to really cut down on mouse weight, there's a trick for the, the G305 and other, um, mice that use batteries similar to it. So looking forward to really getting comfortable with the G305 right now. I'm not quite there yet. I still haven't quite figured out the, the weight, but I have noticed a pretty good benefit to the tracking with it. Um, When I did, I did my workout, my aim workout 
before I'm recording this and my tracking was going really, really well with it. Um, very smooth. I don't, it doesn't feel quite as jagged. And the biggest thing that I like about the G305 is the, that I can move my mouse quite quickly and it tracks the entire time through it. I noticed with the sculpt mouse that sometimes when I would do really quick flicks or I would track really quickly that it would almost not even, it wouldn't track all the way through. It would kind of skip. I don't, there's a term for it and I don't remember what it is, but if in the aim community and there's, I mean, as far as mice go, the tech, there's a technical term for what it's doing when it skips, when you track really fast and, and it just kind of stops and it hangs up that kind of thing. Um, the Microsoft sculpt mouse was doing that and this one doesn't do it. So I'm looking forward to being able to actually capture all of that movement as far as like this sensor will capture all that quick movement, which is going to end up making a more consistent experience for my aim within game because it's not going to be, I'm not going to be missing things. And I think a lot of the stutters that I would experience every now and then in game were just due to the mouse kind of skipping around um, on the Bluetooth signal or something like that. So this one doesn't run on Bluetooth. This one runs on a USB receiver like most of the, the Logitech wireless mice do. Um, it comes with the mouse, a battery, and then there's a, I don't know, probably three foot um, USB cable that you can run the from your PC, wherever your actual PC is, down to wherever you're going to be using the mouse. And you can put a, the little receiver like right in front of the mouse. Because I recommend that you leave the mouse within 20 centimeters of the receiver if it's going to be around a wireless signal such as a router so that there's not any interruption or interference. And then they also recommend it to be... Um, there's another distance recommendation on, on the instructions if you if you read what comes in the box. So keep that in mind if you're going to go wireless. Um, I think it works something up. It probably would work if I just plugged the receiver into my PC because I don't have any wireless signals in here right now. But I've just moved it down close just to make sure that I'm getting the best possible response time that I can from it. So anyways, yeah, big week, new mouse, new internet. So I'm looking forward to a lot of the changes. The new internet's allowing me to upload more. Um, I'm able to fire up a stream again. So I'm going to start trying to stream every single day on Twitch for now. Um, I have some interest in the other platforms as well, and I may experiment with them, but right now I'm on Twitch. And so if you want to check that out, that will be usually from about 2.30 PM CST to 5.30 CST. So it'll be about three hours in the afternoon is what we're shooting for. So that's going to be cool. Um, but yeah, uh, all of this, all of these little upgrades here and there are allowing certain things to, to change. And like I talked about on the other podcasts, like you upgrade as you go. Don't feel bogged down if you, if you can't upgrade immediately because, I mean, I improved quite a bit before I ever even picked up any new peripherals or any new equipment. And a lot of y'all are starting off on better internet than what I had from the get. I mean, I was kind of in old timey internet there like old DSL, just barely better than dial-up almost sometimes, um, depending on what the, the connection was doing. So I'm glad to be away from that. I mean, you know, sometimes my my provider that I got my service through, um, sometimes people don't like to really get into bed with them. But uh, for the fiber, I thought, it, I, I thought it was worth it since it's in this neighborhood. Uh, EA Play was Thursday, <laughs> just to add on to the big week. Uh, they didn't really, I didn't actually watch it. I was busy at the time that the, the stream was going on. But as far as I'm concerned with the FPS games and all of that kind of thing, I, there wasn't really much for us to go off of, um, speaking strictly as a Battlefield fan. There was a couple of teasers in there. They mentioned, or they showed and mentioned very quickly that or hinted at that there could be 128 player battles in the next battlefield that showed some kind of really really rough renders of character models and then just it was like this gray screen with like a lot of troops moving across it and there was somebody on twitter said it was a vietnam era 
weapon, but that's probably most likely a placeholder just to show the to have something to show on there. But that was really the only thing that hinted at any kind of battlefield title. Um, there was no strict battlefield announcement. And some were saying that the guy looked like a guy from Battlefield 3's campaign. I'm not sure. I never played it. So obviously everybody in the Battlefield community was hoping for a little bit more there, but we didn't get it, and so that's fine. Um, I think Dice, is, Dice and EA are most likely taking the approach of silence just to further make sure that there's, you know, that it's out of everybody's mind. Battlefield Five is that is, um, and everybody can kind of get over the struggles of that game, and we can start fresh next year in 2021. So. I wouldn't really expect much of a significant teaser for the next Battlefield and any time this year, the way it seems. I would expect it to happen. They, I would expect them to keep it a little closer to the vest, and then it's going to happen next year sometime once they have something pretty substantial worked up already. Um, Skate 4 is coming out. I saw Danny on PC on Twitter was really excited about that. I don't care about Skate 4. And most of the other titles that they announced, I don't really care about. So I'm going to be kind of just coasting as is here, you know, keep rocking on the battlefields we've got and Warzone, And uh, we'll just keep keep an eye out for any new shooters to play that kind of thing. But it's probably the staples here for a little bit, um, at least the next year and a half. So we'll see what we can do with that. Speaking of the staples, the Call of Duty multiplayer trial that they put up on Warzone is kind of like a hard drug, isn't it? I was or gambling. Um it's addicting. <laughs> I got on there the other day um when they had it this past weekend and had a ton of fun. I think I spent all of Saturday playing that multiplayer trial. It was nuts. Like I spent I don't know, 5 hours or something cuz I and that's when I kind of put it together with like a drug and like the addiction um cuz it's like I was getting tired and I was like, okay, I'm done. But it's like the rounds are just long enough that you're like, no, oh, okay, one more. And you know, the pacing is quick. They don't, you can just press E immediately after dying to respawn on most of the modes. And if it's not instantly, it's like five seconds and you're back in. And so it's just constant action. Boom, 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 boom. And it just keeps you hooked. It's, they've got a good, a very good, product that's good at just hooking people for hours you know and you're just kind of in it so i love those multiplayer trial weekends when they come around it's a bit you know because it is so action-packed and fast-paced you just stay in the action constantly it's a nice change of pace from warzone which can sometimes depending on where you drop can be as slow or as fast as you want it to be and so and that's fine uh i couldn't do the multiplayer trial probably all the time that's the reason i haven't purchased the entire multiplayer is because it's just sometimes it just gets too much because there's no depth there the, um, the ttk is so low uh, it's really for my purposes really only good at helping me on flicks and target switching and that kind of thing if you look at it from a practice perspective um, a lot of times you'll just have a lot of just really stupid deaths in that game that there's not really any amount of skill can get you around, you know, stuff like, you know, there's a VTOL in the air and you spawn in and get blasted by it, or you spawn and there's three enemies looking at you if you're on, dude, that shipment map, oh my gosh, I, I finally got to experience it because they put it in the trial um, this past weekend, and that map is just exactly the meme everybody has made it out to be. That map is crazy, dude. There's, it's just chaos. Like, don't even bother even trying to sweat on that one because, um, what's the point? You're just gonna spawn with three guys looking at you, or you know, spawn and they're they're behind you, or a C4 flies through the air and lands at your feet right as you spawn, that kind of thing. And heaven forbid somebody get a VTOL or a, a chopper gunner or a gunship or something because then it's just you know it's just chaos um yeah it's fun but don't expect to have any kind of significant game come out of that i was able to string together some pretty good little you know kill streaks but you'll get on you'll get on a kill streak and then it's just you know one of those crazy abrupt things happens that i talked about before and then that's just it you just uh 
I don't know. There's a lot of things that are just chalked up to randomness to me when I play that. And so it's fun, but it's not something I want to do full time, which is why I haven't purchased the full multiplayer. Anyways, uh, I guess we'll run through some ads and then be right back. I don't know how this is going to work for the video bit, but um, I guess you'll just because I'll cut it on the audio, but I won't cut the video because how does that work? Um, we'll see. Anyways, and we're back. All right. And so the video, that's uh, going to be goofy looking because you're just going to see me change things. I guess I'll have to edit it a little bit, <laughs> kind of figuring it out as we go here, but I'm glad to be getting these up on YouTube. Uh, another part of this, you know, that's kind of the theme of this week is that it was a big week and then <laughs> it's funny because I sat down to do this podcast and I was like what happened this week there's been so much that I forgot all of it you know um, but it has been a pretty big week as far as my aim training goes I actually got to start the advanced beginner part of the aimer 7 routine in Kovacs which is nice and there's a nice paragraph after you finish the what do they call it? Intermediate beginner or something? The the second stage, second beginner stage. There's a little paragraph. He goes through some, some aim theory and some different ways to kind of look at some things. And then he talks about you're about to experience a couple problems when you start this next bit. And he goes through that you're going to feel flooded by movement. And you're, you're about to see, basically his theme of the paragraph is you're about to see just how bad you actually are. And it's interesting because if you actually follow pretty religiously and consistently his first two pieces of that beginner routine, you get much, much better. And you're, you kind of start to feel like, you know, hot stuff. You're like, man, all right, let's do it. I'm, I'm pretty good. And, uh, then, you know, he, he says that like, you're about to see how bad you are. And I imagine that some people go in there and they're like, all right, whatever, man, like, I'm not worried about it. And, you know, then they actually do see how bad they are. I mean, that's what happened to me. I didn't go into it with that mentality of like, all right, I uh, hurt her. Um, I was actually like, okay, I mean, I know this guy knows his stuff, so let's see what he's talking about. And he was not lying because they throw in on the advanced beginner routine, they start throwing in a lot of short strafe stuff. So instead of the bot taking these longer sweeping left to right movements, it's a lot of just boom, 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 boom. And they're switching and strafing so fast that the way he puts it is that you're flooded with the bot's movement. You don't know what to do. And that's because your reading skills are bad. And sure enough, my reading skills are super poor. I, I had no clue what was going on on um, close short strafes. It's just boom, 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 boom. And you're just like, oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> you can't figure out what's going on. And so that's really interesting. Um, the advanced beginner routine part is actually much longer than the first two parts because the first two parts it's i think it advises in the routine that you do 10 to 15 consecutive days on very beginner and then intermediate beginner and then this one is actually i believe what did he say four to five weeks something like that it's like actual several weeks on this one and it makes sense because you actually are coming into this one this is like the first real kind of Okay, now we're actually training. Excuse me. This is the first real, like, serious bit, so it makes sense that it's going to take longer. And then when you get to those routines, you're like, yeah, no, I understand that it's going to take me, it's going to take a second <laughs> to get these down. And I've gotten a little bit better the last, this past week of starting. I started on Tuesday, um, and I've gotten marginally better. I was able to hit some high scores. I mean, of course, you hit a high score when you first do it because it's the first time you're doing it. But I've been able to surpass those uh, a little bit this week on some of the exercises. Had a great experience this morning with some of the tracking exercises. Close long strafes went great this morning. And also did pretty good on one wall, six targets, TE. Broke a, bro broke a PR on that one as well. So that was a lot of fun. But looking forward to this advanced routine, usually my, my schedule starts to get interrupted and things get a bit hectic in the summer. So, uh, you know, there's vacations and friends and stuff like that that's always going on. So I'm curious to see if I'm going to be able to get five consecutive weeks in. I know it's probably going to get broken up sometime this week, and that's going to introduce conflicts to my content schedules and my workout schedules and 
streaming schedules, all that kind of stuff. So that's going to be an issue. So I may end up being on this advanced beginner routine a lot longer than five weeks from this week, uh, which is kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about also the something that I mentioned on last episode where I was talking about going on runs within multiple targets uh, within Kovacs or I mean if you're playing in game this is something you kind of have to think about on like a not so in your face level but um, I was talking about going on runs as in like clusters of enemies like groups of enemies just kind of looking at them for a second and then you know take them out in quick succession and then move on to the next group um I think that's probably good and I think that's kind of where I'm at as part of a process of learning to be faster. So I think what actually needs to happen is that you move on to chaining more of those groups together. So it's instead of just group and then, you know, kind of re-aim and then group, what you do instead is that you chain the group and then you're immediately just jumping to the next group and chaining it and what that it you know some of you probably realized and what i realized as i was thinking about that i was like okay well what that actually is is just being fast um you're working on hitting all these targets and then quickly jumping to the next group of targets taking all them out quickly jumping so what you're actually doing is just being fast at taking out all of the targets on the screen um kind of something i was thinking about and been working on more Part of this advanced routine is that I have I went back to the complete routine on it because I wanted to be sure that I was also including tracking. For the intermediate bit, I just did click timing, and I really thought that my tracking suffered. And if you do a lot of tracking exercises, it actually improves your readability of targets, which is going to help you with your click timing stuff also, and like leading shots, that kind of thing, because you need to be able to read what your target is doing. Um, he talks about that in that paragraph I mentioned earlier. And I saw actually on Reddit a guy, I cannot remember his name. I was going to look it up before the podcast. Um, He's on the FPS Aim Trainer subreddit. And he posted a video about using a metronome when you're doing click timing activities. And he recommended to try that if you're kind of in a rut where you're moving a little bit slower than you want to move. You kind of up, you put a metronome on and you just, it, you know, keeps, keeps time. Just dink 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 and you just work on moving between targets in a nice consistent pattern with that metronome and you up it to the point where it's a little bit uncomfortable and what i've been doing is using a metronome alongside my click timing routines and setting it to an uncomfortable point and then trying to just keep consistent and hit targets and sometimes you're going to miss and you just have to kind of move on to the next one and just keep going and that's just part of it but i've found that that's actually been pretty helpful the um, the guy that put the video up recommended to not do it with every single part of the routine um if you're say you say you're doing 10 minutes of one wall six targets and you're just jumping between targets not to do it you don't want to use the metronome for all of it you kind of want to turn it off and try your own hand and your own skill um without the help and the assistance to keep your pace but i have found that it has been pretty helpful and what i've been doing alongside the metronome is to strive for about 85% accuracy. And then it's like, if I can hit around 85, then I know that's, that's a speed I need to work on. If it's lower than that, I probably need to bump it down a little bit. And then once I find that point of about 85% accuracy, at say 130 beats per minute. Then I just kind of work on that, keep working out, keep working out. And then once I get that same speed, that 130 beats per minute, once I get that up to around 95% accuracy, then I bump the speed up again by like 5 or 10 beats per minute, and it's, it gets a little uncomfortable. You start missing targets, but you you are faster now than you were before. So that's kind of something I'm doing for click timing things. Um, if you're on Kovacs, that'll be something that'll make a lot of sense if you're a console player trying to work on aim, or if you're uh, you don't use Kovacs on PC. That's gonna be that's gonna be a little bit trickier advice. Um, that's pretty much aim trainer specific advice or an aim trainer specific method. Um, if you're on console or don't use that, you'll have to be a little bit more creative on keeping pace because a lot of times you just can't do that. Um, the practice ranges are not 
not set up in most games. The built-in practice range is not quite good enough to accomplish something like that. I will tell you, though, I noticed that Valorant has a pretty good little practice range in it that you can do that on. It pops up multiple targets, and you can kind of just keep a nice, consistent rhythm. Um, that one wall on Battlefield 5's practice range, you probably could try to do it on that. Um, you're obviously going to be limited by the, the spawn rate of some of those targets, whether you set it on easy, medium, or hard. But the hard one is fairly quick, so um, if you worked your way up to that, you'd be doing pretty good. You'd be well on your way. Um, so yeah, that's uh, I wanted to bring that up about the basically just going on the runs. I've been working on that with um, kind of upping the speed between jumping between my, my groups of targets um, rather than seeing them all as like individual things, uh, which is not a problem because in game you're going to have moments where it's just going to be, okay, we've got three enemies, maybe a squad clustered up here if it's battlefield and you can, if you get the jump on them, take all of them out and then it's off to find the next squad. It's not going to be the entire team in front of you all at once. Sometimes it is. I mean, sometimes you get on like Operation Underground and you turn down a hallway and there's 11 people there and then you're kind of in a bind. But um, a lot of times it is just groups of enemies. So I think that's why I'm fine doing the grouped method, but I also think it's probably pretty important to kind of keep time and jump to the next cluster of enemies. Um, that may be more important just for beating high scores in Kovacs and less important for an in-game mechanic. You know, it may not be actually a functional gameplay skill to learn. I'm not sure. Um, kind of just learning as I go with that. But I am working on upping speed because, you know, upping speed is going to be something that's going to save your life in a multiplayer PvP game, you know. Um, it probably won't save your life in actual life unfortunately. <laughs> um, maybe it will. Good reaction time, you know, from playing an aim trainer um, on the computer. I guess it could save your life in real life. If you see something whizzing at your head, you know, you got the peripheral vision because you've been practicing looking at little things out of your peripheral. I don't know. I'm just messing around at this point. But uh, where are we at? I would say, um, oh yeah, I wanted to talk about, I've got this in my notes. I want to talk about, I've been heeding my own advice a little bit and watching a, a streamer that I enjoy learning off of the way he plays. Um, he's pretty entertaining too if you like to watch people rage. And so I'm going to, I guess, plug him a little bit if you want to check him out. Um, if you haven't yet, he's probably pretty known by a lot of you guys that play Battlefield, but um, Enders on Twitch and Twitter um, is his name, Enders. And I wanted to bring him up in the podcast because I feel like I learned quite a bit just by observing the way he plays and like really focusing, like I talked about, on watching a streamer better than you. And Enders is great. I mean, he's one of probably the top infantry guys, which is something I'm striving to be. I mean, I want to be up there around the skill level of these guys that are great infantry players. And so, you know, you got to watch these guys that do what you want to do. And so I was watching, I've been watching Ender's stream here and there um, to kind of observe the things he does. And there's one thing that I really wanted to bring up that I noticed that Ender's does. And I, this is kind of what I boil it down to um, in just a quick sentence, but, uh, Enders moves very quickly when he plays, but he plays slowly. Um, something I noticed from watching him for a few days. He moves quickly, but he plays slowly. And what I mean by that is his movements are, and he's had a lot of practice to do this, but his movements are very quick. He flicks to his targets very quickly, and he drops them quickly because he's got the recoil management down. He knows what his gun's going to do, and he's got a lot of practice in doing that. But he's not just running around the map willy-nilly, just pushing, 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 pushing up and just running quickly all the time like I see myself doing and like I see some other players doing sometimes as well. Um, not that other people can't do that at a high level, but Enders does it this way and it's, it's really cool. Um, he just moves pretty methodically and slowly around points and up to other points and he doesn't ever put himself too often in a situation where he's going to be caught by surprise, which is something that really good players do. Um, if you watch him, you'll notice that, and you'll notice his very good use of cover and stuff like that. So he's not ever, he's not ever uh, you know, 
too far away from a piece of cover that he can get behind and save himself if he does get caught by surprise. And then all of the other times um, that don't meet that criteria, if he is caught in the open and he's surprised, a lot of times his mechanical skill and his ability to be really familiar and comfortable with his mechanics allow him to save himself, which is just good aim and good reaction time, that kind of thing. And, you know... It's, I think Enders is a great player to watch if you're interested in getting better at just solely infantry gameplay. And he does some vehicle stuff too. He does a little bit of everything. Um, just wanted to plug him though because he's got a really entertaining stream. Um, real hot-headed kind of guy. Uh, a lot of people, you know, I think probably watch him for that. His personality is, he definitely rages at Battlefield quite a bit, which is amusing to watch at times. But he also, he's really good to watch if you are, wanting to check out things you can do to improve your infantry gameplay. Just look at the way he moves and look at the way that he, you know, analyzes situations around flags, that kind of thing. Uh, I learned a lot. Just you can pick up on it pretty quickly if you sit down and with the purpose of wanting to glean information off of him and learn the way better players move. If you sit down with that mentality, you'll pick up on a lot of things he does really quick and it can be really helpful. I mean, I was able to turn a lot of my gameplay around pretty quickly um, the next couple of days of just implementing some of the the ways that I would see him move using cover and that kind of thing. Um, I'm probably repeating myself a lot here, but it's, I think, important to watch people that play a little bit better than you because you're going to be able to um, see some things that you didn't actually always think about and since they're better than you you know that they're they're things that you can implement that will up your game as well and get you a better kd better scores all that kind of stuff that people like to strive for and so i think it's important to check that kind of stuff out but uh i guess that's about all i wanted to talk about today that's all i've got in my notes and starting to get a little late in the day. Uh, it's about 12.30 here, actually. So I've got on my notes here, plug the stream, talk about starting it back up. So I am starting to stream again. Now that I've got an upload speed that'll allow me to do it, I can show a stream that's in HD, which is great. And, excuse me, still working on settings to try and get it really locked down. The first stream I did Wednesday evening, was there was a lot of artifacting and like compression looking stuff on it. And I didn't like that. So uh, what I found out was I was actually only using about a third of the bit rate that I wanted to use. So I upped that the next day and it looked pretty good, but I was dropping some frames because I changed the encoder around a little bit, my encoding settings. And then I tried again with some different settings yesterday night, um, just doing a a test stream, the bandwidth test thing, and checking out the Twitch inspector and stuff like that. And it worked a lot better. So I'm going to try and implement that for the stream later today and see how that goes. I mean, hopefully there's a stream later today. I've got some family coming in, so uh, that schedule may get a little interrupted. We'll see. But just wanted to plug the stream. Um, it's on Twitch at Hot Sauce Z, just like everywhere else. I'm going to be trying to do that stream, like I mentioned earlier, about 2.30 p.m. CST, which would be, what, 3.30 on the East Coast or 12.30 on the West Coast, and try and do that each day of the week, Monday through Friday is probably what we'll do. Weekends get a little hectic, but hopefully Monday through Friday I've got that going. We've got this podcast that you're listening to. New episodes go up on Fridays usually, and then... YouTube videos, just whenever I get them done. I'm working on a FOV comparison video right now, comparing high versus low FOV. So that video will be up most likely next week sometime once I get everything ironed out and get some, I've got to get some clips recorded, that kind of thing for it. And if you just want to see highlight clips, I'm on Clutch and then at Hot Saucy as well. And then on Twitter and Instagram, I'm at Hot Sauce Z also, so I'm Hot Sauce Z everywhere. Um, Instagram gets a little bit of highlight clips and some helpful bits from the podcast and from the YouTube videos. And then Twitch is just, or Twitter is where I just talk about general things. So be sure and give those all a check as well. Really appreciate you guys stopping in to watch today. Um, watch or listen. Um, we're doing both now, I guess. Uh, really appreciate the 
the people that are tuning in to listen every week. That's awesome. Really glad y'all are here. Please be sure to rate, review, and subscribe on your podcast platform of choice so we can up the rankings and get some more people in here um, joining in us, joining in with us on the podcast and on YouTube, etc. That would be awesome. Uh, so I guess that'll about wrap it up. Today we talked about new mouse, new internet, great stuff. Um, EA Play had some kind of lackluster things. We mentioned the Call of Duty multiplayer trial and how it's like great for feeding our FPS crackhead tendencies. Um, the Kovacs advanced routine is pretty tricky, so that's one to look forward to to getting to if you're trying to do Kovacs because that's, I really feel like, when the development is going to start happening. Um, we talked about grouping clusters of enemies together and chaining between them, and we talked about heeding um, the advice of watching streamers like Enders that are <laughs> probably a lot better than we are. So really hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Again, if you did, please be sure to rate and review and be sure to check out those other socials too and, and see if there's something there that appeals to you. Uh, we'd love to have you on those other channels as well. So appreciate you guys tuning in and I hope y'all have a great weekend and we'll talk to you next week.